mailbag time again. Get a whole bunch of stuff here. Let's get stuck into it. Don't forget the links down below for things I can give you links for. Such as these. These are some PTCs. 4 amps. 8 amps. 10 amps. And 3 amps. Now I needed these for something the other day. What was that? I was building something. On the motorhome, I was building in a Venus OS based Raspberry Pi system to interface with the Victron solar system and stuff like that. So it basically runs a Victron OS on a Raspberry Pi with a touch screen and stuff like that. I was building all that into the bus because I wanted to have a new monitoring system. The system I already had was okay, but what happened is when I changed the solar controller to a Victron system, I no longer had any solar monitoring apart from logging directly into the devices through Bluetooth, which is a bit of a pain. So I put in one of these Victron OS Raspberry Pi devices. Instead of buying a Serbo GX, which is horrendously expensive, and then you need the screen to go with it as well, which is also horrendously expensive. So for a fraction of price, you can use a Raspberry Pi with a touch screen. And basically I 3D printed a surround for that. And I might even publish that because the screen seems quite commonly used and there was no surrounds I could find anywhere. I couldn't find any like surrounds on Thingiverse and stuff like that. I designed a surround for it. This is what these are coming to. <laughs> I'll get to the point. I needed to, to fuse the Raspberry Pi system, the actual touch screen and auto control system and stuff. I used a PTC because that way if something goes wrong it will reset itself and come right again eventually, hopefully. If you've got a fuse that goes, you know, it's a pain, you've got to pull it all apart and, and fix it. But if you have one of these go, you can just turn the power off, let it cool down, turn it back on again, it will come right if it's minor thing, you know. Uh, it's just an overload or some kind. Resettable means you don't get stranded without the device. I think I, I had to put a 5 amp one in there. But I only actually wanted a 3. I think a 3 amp, 4 amp would have been better. But I only had a 5. So that's what I had to put in. So I realised I didn't actually have enough of these. That's why I got those. That was a long way around saying it, wasn't it? I should probably explain what a PTC is. If you don't know. It's a positive temperature coefficient resistor, basically. In a way, it's a kind of resistor. It's like a fuse. As they heat up, the resistance increases. But it has like a very rapid increase in resistance with temperature. So initially, it's got a very low resistance. It's basically a wire. But if it does start to get hot because of excess current through it, just like you would for a fuse, if it goes above that limit, it can get hot. Once it starts warming up, it will get to like a point where it will be like a knee. And suddenly the resistance will suddenly increase. And it will rapidly, it's exponentially increase. So it will act like a fuse. It will still apply some power to the circuit. It doesn't completely break the circuit. But the resistance greatly increases. And that's basically how they work. So that completely cool power. They do still trickle some power through, even when they've been tripped. But it's, um, it acts like a big resistor. This is also going to be for the motorhome project, but I've since used a different device. Because it's what I had on hand. I would have used this if I had it. It's a small little buck converter. This can handle 12 to 24 volts, so I can actually do something more than that. And it outputs 5 volts at 5 amps, which is perfect for what I was working on. I needed a 5 volt power supply to run the Raspberry Pi and the touch screen and stuff like that. And 5 amps is enough for that. I only need literally 2 or 3 amps at most. You know, plenty of headroom, basically double the power, it's nice and compact, hook the wires up and you're done. The one I ended up using was a 20 amp module because that's what I had on hand. If I pull that apart again at some point, I'll swap it out for this one. But this is what I wanted to use, but I didn't have any. I thought I did have some, but I only had the bigger one. I've had a few of these devices and they actually work really well. They're relatively inexpensive and they work quite well. If you need a cheap little power supply, well worth getting them, I reckon. Some more cables. This is like a set of five, one meter long. So we want red, red, and black, and three blues. I was hoping for two sets of red and black, but that's fine. It didn't specify, it's just an assortment of cables. I think it showed red and black and then whatever. These are quite thick ones, these are heavy duty ones. I showed these before, I did testing on them, and they actually did quite well. They had quite a low internal resistance on them. These are just a reorder with a different length. I've got uh, two meters before and 50 centimeters, I think I've got some of that. Thicker conductor means less voltage drop, so when you're trying to do testing, including voltage monitoring, such as you know, doing load testing, that sort of thing, it can be useful. You want to make sure that the load isn't dropping too much through the cables and why dissipate heat in the cables unnecessarily. So get some better quality ones. These work well. Okay. <laughs> I didn't order all the tape. 
<laughs> I didn't order this. Was that a free gift or something? Gift. Well, thank you for your tape. All right, look at the Transformers. Usually when I buy something, I buy at least two. Because then when I use one, I've still got one left. There's nothing like being hesitant to use something because then you should last one. 220 volt in, 110 volt out. So both the same, I believe. Yes. I don't know what the power rating was on these. I have to go and look it up. But I ordered a few different ones, different sizes. So I wanted one of these for that valve tester I've got, which is 110 volt powered. I'm hoping that I can get a transformer which will fit inside that casing and then I can have a 220 volt sort of, you know, ish input, which would be 240 volt most likely. And then drop it down to 110 volts using one of these transformers. Now I did get a couple of different sizes. This is the first one that's arrived. I have to look at which ones these are, what the actual ratings were in these. I can't actually remember what I needed them to be now because I did actually measure the power input into the valve tester whilst it's being used and I did show that in video well in the video I've recorded I haven't published it yet I've still got to edit that one yet that will be coming out at some point and I've repaired that valve tester but now I want to do a conversion to 240 volts from 110 which is say that's all I need these but I think it was like 15 watts or 20 watts or something like that but then I'm space constrained I've got to try and get whatever I can into the casing to make it fit these are quite large, I don't even know if they're going to fit in, I think this was the one I really wanted to put in there because of the power handling, I think that's what it was but I think this probably won't quite fit so I did also get a smaller one I think which was like 5 watts less power handling but it's marginal whether it can handle the power of the actual unit but that will, I think it will fit in that one but anyway, we'll see watch for that video hmm Another gift roll of tape. Exactly the same as the other one. I wonder what could be in here. Any guesses? <laughs> Maybe those were the smaller ones. Oh. <laughs> so those were the smaller ones, these are the bigger ones. From the same place, interesting. I didn't just send them together, anyway. So exactly the same. The intention is to step down from 220 volts, slash T40, which is what she is in my country. Is that the same idea? Step down from 240 volts down to 110 volts, but these are physically much bigger. So it's a case of seeing what will physically fit inside the casing. If I can get the big one in, great, otherwise I have to go to the smaller one. I'm not even sure this will fit. <laughs> Worst case, I put an external inline box on it or something, you know. I'd rather keep it all externally original, just having a better power cord going to it with a internal transformer, but anyway. Watch for that video coming out. Now this package I've already opened, because I wasn't quite sure if I had my dress over, all over everything. Okay, some more of these. Exactly the same thing, 5 volt, 5 amp. So I ordered these from different places, and I think they're basically the same thing really. This is a different branded one. Well, I think they come out of the same factory to be honest. So it's the same as the other one. And I bet this one's the same, it's got the same, it says 5 amp on it. So I'm guessing it's the same one. Uh, this is on the back. 12 to 24, 5 amp, 5 volt. So obviously, as I said, if I realise I need something, I'll get a bunch of them with the intention of having a supply for a period of time. Supplies change. What I found, especially in New Zealand, it's quite hard sometimes because you buy something and you think, oh, I really like that. And you go back months later or a year later or whatever, thinking, okay, you go and get some more. Don't stock it anymore. Never going to get any more of it again. My tendency from shopping in New Zealand, if you find something, buy a lot of them quickly because there's a good chance you won't be able to get them ever again. <laughs> so um, that kind of carries through to other stuff I buy as well now. Uh, this one looks like the same sort of thing, but higher current. So if I find something I like, I buy a bunch of them, because who knows, in six months time, I won't be able to get them anymore. So this is RC9 one. So different, they had a different brand on it, they both come in the same package. You know, go, go figure. So yes, I think it's the same factory producing them. And this is five volt, 10 amp output. But that's a 10 amp version, although it's a similar sort of size package, it's very really slightly bigger. So I've got two of those as well. So I've got a 20 amp one installed in the motorhome right now. And I'm, I, I kind of want to take that back out because I want to save the high current one for something else. It doesn't need a 20 amp one in there. You know, a 5 amp or 10 amp one will do just fine. So it's going to be a bit trickier to open up because it's covered in tapes, so that's why I'm going to use a real knife for a change. And these are some range extenders, KVM, they call it KVM, so USB in, HDMI in, and you've got an RJ45 out, 
and also HDMI out, which is interesting me. you got RJ45 getting that side, HDMI output, and two USB ports, so keyboard mouse kind of input. So the idea of this is that you can extend a USB or HDMI connection over an Ethernet cable. You are a little bit restricted in what you can actually do with it. It's not perfect, there are some compromises, but if you've got a system where you need to have a keyboard and mouse and a monitor away from your main computer with no easy way of running cables, you can use an Ethernet cable. It's one cable then, and that does the whole lot. But obviously, there are compromises. Now, in my situation, I got these from the motorhome. I ended up using something different because I had one laying around, which has actually done the job. So I'm probably going to stick with that one because it means I don't have to change it again. So in the motorhome, I was setting the Raspberry Pi up as I've already covered this other stuff. So I had two different ways of setting up the Raspberry Pi and the touch screen and I could either put the Raspberry Pi down with all the solar charge controllers and things like that and have the V Direct cables plugged in to the Raspberry Pi directly from the solar controllers in the area where I keep all the electronic stuff. And then I could hook up the touch screen and stuff up in the console. Running cables up to there is actually really hard, but I already have an Ethernet cable there which was used for the previous solar charge controller, which is no longer used. So I've got an Ethernet cable. So the idea is that I could run an Ethernet cable between the Raspberry Pi and the control box, set it where the electronics are, and use an Ethernet cable which is already in place up to the touch screen up on the control panel. So that's one of the options I had, but I had two ways of doing it. I could either run USB back down to where all the equipment is and have the V-Direct cables plugged into that, or I could put the Raspberry Pi down there and have the HDMI and the USB going up to the touch console to control the touch screen. So I had two ways I could do it. Either way it would work. And I ended up going with the Raspberry Pi up with the touch screen and running USB through the Ethernet cable down to the system stuff in the, in the electronics bay. That's the way I've currently done it because I had a cheap converter around and it actually works. It just, it just works. So I ended up using that. But I wasn't sure it was going to work. And so I bought a few different things, a few different options to allow me to configure it different ways. And this was one of the ways which would allow me to do the Raspberry Pi down in the electronics bay with a remote touch screen through Ethernet. So that's where I got those, because that was one of the ways I might have had to do it. I mean, if this proves to not be reliable, these converters we've got in and out are $5 or something, they're really cheap. But it may not last, they may not be reliable, whatever. If that is the case, then I end up switching to these. So these ones were based on having a Raspberry Pi in the electronics bay. But they don't have to be done that way. I could just not use the HDMI link, only use the USB, and run it the way around. It wouldn't matter. But then I also got another set of these, which I showed in another mailbag, which... You may or may not have seen, I don't remember children putting this in. That was just USB connections. It had like a four port USB on it. So that might be a better option. But anyway, that's what that's about. It's amazing what you can find when you look around. There's all sorts of things out there. Haven't done this in a while. Click subscribe right now, quick, before you forget. Subscribe over there. Page on support link over there if you're interested in supporting the channel. Catch you later.